Lord has been good and always, always will be. He just trust, wants us to be good to him. For sure. Man, wasn't that great? All of it. I mean, <clears throat> whoever sings revival or comes special singers or whatever, there's none no greater than what we have here that God has blessed us with right here at the church. <clears throat> That's for sure. Preaching a little different story. You have good <laughs> preaching. Uh, <clears throat> we do love and appreciate you so much. Um, I, I just sitting here thinking about watching these children grow up. I was out in the parking lot the other night, and Scott was there, and Tiffany come up and said, Dad, can I turn the truck around? And he said, yeah, you know, already. I mean, I remember when they carried her out the door. It seemed like yesterday. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, she's just growing up. Now she's turning the truck around. <laughs> but I also heard she's at home one day and asked her dad if she'd go out and try the car, drive around the field a little bit. And he said, sure, go ahead. So she went out a little while, and after a while she come back and said, Dad, the car won't start. He said, what's wrong with it? She said, I believe it's got water in the carburetor. He said, well, Tiffany, you don't know anything about cars. He said, that car can't have water in the carburetor. She said, Dad, I believe it's got water in the carburetor. Nah. He said, well, I believe it does. He said, well, I'll go look at it. He said, where's it at? She said, down there in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> it might, but it didn't. <laughs> Praise the Lord, ain't God good? <clears throat> He's a magnificent God. And everybody that asks, I'm fine. And you better have to be two of them. If you think the world can take that. Uh, yeah, I, I just had something. That, an old thorn of the flesh came up. And uh, we took care of that. And so we're fine now. You have your Bibles today, or it's probably up there. <clears throat> Pray for my voice. In Acts uh, 7 9, 7, no, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. 7 9, 7 9. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. It seemed like a lot of the testimonies this morning and the song that they sang is that no matter what they've been through, they know that God is still with them. And when you look at people that believe in God <clears throat> and they go through things, there's people on the outside who don't know God question whether or not all this has happened to you and you believe in him, you trust in him. I don't know whether God great or not, whether he's still with you. Maybe God's not with you. Now, I would imagine when the rich man died and they began to take inventory of his assets and somebody might have said, boy, the Lord sure was good to this man. But they didn't know where that rich man was. They might have thought, well, I heard that old beggar laying out in the ditch died also that night. And, you know, that old fellow didn't have anything. I mean, surely God had forgot all about him. But he died out there, the dogs licking his sores. He died out there without a friend one. He didn't even have the money to go to the doctor. He laid in that ditch, and beside of that, he was full of sores. I just wonder, I just don't know. Uh, you know, uh, God probably forgot about him. How wrong they are. And you know why they're wrong? It's because they don't know the mind of God. The mind of God is different from the mind of the world. The mind of God is different than a secular mind because we wouldn't be having the mess today with our government we've got if all those people had a spiritual mind. We'd be sitting on top of the world today. But it's just one turmoil after another. So if we have little troubles comes along, we lose somebody we love. We have something to happen to us that they don't understand. That doesn't mean that God is not still with us. 
God is probably more with us than ever before. And we need to realize that because problems do come in life. It doesn't matter who you are, how much money you've got. There's a lot of folk in the world woke up this morning with a million dollars in the bank, didn't have to worry about something to eat or a place to sleep. They've already so bored with every sport there is. They got up and said, what am I going to do today? I'm bored to death. And I remember I was in the Army with a boy. And evidently his family was rich. And he was there in Korea, nothing to do and so on. He said, I used to sit back home on a Sunday and look out towards that yacht that was sitting out in the harbor. I would look at something else. And he'd say, I'm so bored, what am I going to do? And he said, now I really know what boredom is. He didn't realize that he had everything right in front of him because it had always been there and he never knew what it was like to be in a hard place. Now he's finding himself in a difficult position for him. It wasn't difficult for me because we never had indoor plumbing when I was at home. We didn't have electricity till 1947. I had lived in the condition like we was living in in Korea. So when these guys from New York City and Detroit and all these places come in, moaned and groaned and didn't know what they was going to do and so on and so forth and just whining and complaining every moment of their life, it didn't bother me so much because I'm just at home. I live this way. We didn't have uh, outside plumbing, inside plumbing. We had outside, you had to run to the well and get it. It was running water. You grabbed the bucket and run down the well, got your bucket full and run back. And we had hot and cold. It was hot in the summertime, cold in the winter. But all those pleasures we didn't have. But it wasn't rough for me because it had already been there. You know, sometimes God lets us go through some rough places because he knows lying ahead is a place that's going to be worse for us to go through in our Christian experience. So he is... Tempering us to put up with a bad mic and to go on and preach anyway. <laughs> he's tempering us. I thank God for the mic. Ain't complaining. And uh, he's tempering us for that really big problem that's out ahead. Now that doesn't mean that God has left us. You remember those folks that came and looked at Job? He was sitting there full of sores and boils. He even took a pot thread and scraped those boils. My, what pain, not an agony that must be in. He was dirty. He was filthy. He was everything it looked like that somebody that somebody hated had done to him. But that wasn't the reason. You know, sometimes what God lets us go through things, he lets us go through them because he wants someone else to look upon us and show them as an example, even though we're going through a valley, he's still God of the valley. He's still God of the mountaintop. He's still God of the night. He's still God of the day. He's still God of the morning. And praise the Lord, standing in the shadows, somewhere you'll always find Jesus. <clears throat> He'll always be there. Now I know that when tragedy comes in life, and oh, praise God this morning. I bet the devil is just howling today. I bet he's got his tail between his legs, running around crying and whining. Oh, I thought I had that boy. I, I made him lose his eyesight. I think that's the end of him and so on. Well, you know, even after day after day went by, he probably rejoiced in that. Oh, but 